19 children and two teachers victims of what is now the deadliest school shooting in Texas history. It was devastating. It hit close to home, but I feel like I have to use my platform to like try and help out the families that were affected. <laughs> <laughs> How y'all doing today? Jordan, I got a big question for you. What is it? I want to see, and you and the fam would love to come out to our game versus the Jets. <laughs> yes. Yeah? <laughs> There, Jordan. This weekend for my cause, my cleave campaign, uh, I can't tell you how cool it is to see how many of you guys have things that mean a lot to you that you want to support. Speaking of that, we all know uh, how much uh, the day down in Uvalde, uh, Texas affected all of us. But uh, KB, uh, I want to credit him for uh, creating a GoFundMe page to, to help benefit the people that were involved, the, the wonderful kids that were there. It's going to be awesome to have you with us this weekend. You're going to break us down Vikings on three. Vikings on three! Watch on three! Vikings! When you feel for something, that's just, you just move off of genuine, genuine love. Man. I was pushed to do so. These are my cleats. I wanted y'all to sign them for me before the game. <laughs> if y'all don't mind. That's awesome. <laughs> Who's going to wear these? <laughs> Your nine and two Vikings taking on the seven and four New York Jets. Seen a bigger one. <laughs> yes. James on now. James on. Ready? Ready for the scout chair? It's going to be, uh, you know, a heck of a football game today. And they are a really, really good defense, an opportunistic offense. We got to be at our best. I don't know if I got to say it again, but it's going to be a movie today. I'm going to say it every week. My life is a movie, baby. Turn me up. Let's eat. Let's eat. Third and two, first third down of the game. Two receivers left and right, and Mike White operates from the right hash, heading to the west side of U.S. Bank Stadium. Here's an interception by Harrison Smith. And what a great job by Cameron Bynum to tip that ball in the air. Um, that play actually happened to me in the Cowboys game, um, but that frustrated me. A couple of receivers off to the right. Gap passes over the middle, and Michael Gallup gets up and pulls it in at the eight yard line. It'll be a gain of eight. We see the formation all the time. It's a basic, basic formation, basic um, concept of RPO, slot formation. So you have two receivers split out, and the same scenario this time. And I saw it, and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna play aggressive, I'm gonna make a play on this. Made the play on it, was able to get Harry his what, fourth or fifth, I think fifth interception of the season, um, just to add to his resume, his crazy resume that I'm trying to chase after. Minnesota now plus seven in turnover differential this season. And the Vikings are off and running. Minnesota takes over. Game tied at three, Cousins under center. And up to Dalvin, up the middle, and Dalvin to the end zone. Deep shot, Jalen Rager, 38 yards on the hookup. From the Jets' 10, Kirk out of the shotgun, straight drop, looking to the right, throwing to the right, has a man, and that man is good. Touchdown, he's JJ. And the Vikings have taken a 26 to 15 lead. Lots, lots, let's make a play, come on. Goal from the one empty backfield, White takes the snap, Looks left, fires to the center, incomplete! It's incomplete to Braxton Berrios. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. 
Every single week I draw something up in my notes. I'm a visual person, so I need to draw all the routes and I, I see those pictures in the game when I'm playing. I have a photographic memory, so I'm able to see the drawing in my head. So every single game I have, okay, this is my opportunity. I'm feeling a pick for you right now. Fourth down. Jets down five. White launches. Intercepted by Bynum. And the Vikings slam the door shut against the Jets. That was the one route I drew up for that Jets game and was able to come down with it on the last play of the game. Go celebrate. Took the knee, slid, and ran straight from the celebration. Cam Bynum with the second interception for him this season. Why wouldn't it come down to the wire? That's 2022 Minnesota Vikings football. Game over. Game over. Game over. Game over. Yeah, baby. Let's go. Thank you for here. My cause, my cleats, keys to Freedom Ministries. Shout out New Life Community Care. Link in my bio to donate to the cause for the typhoon victims in the Philippines. It's bigger than me today. Let's go. My cause, my cleats is probably the best time of the year for me and most important for me because we're able to really uh, display what our cause is. And for me, it's my country in the Philippines and my family. This is the perfect scenario for me to have the best game of my life. Yeah, this is probably the most important stretch of the, of the season, just being able to battle through these important games, especially if we have all our division games. Hey, everybody don't get the opportunity to do something that they love. You know what? I cherish every moment. These games are important, and this is the toughest part of the season. Um, when your body starts to hurt, you start getting tired. Just all the factors that, that hit in December, you have to battle through all that and still have to win football Good games. Good luck, man. Yeah, you too. Good luck, brother. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, stay healthy. Minnesota Vikings are in Detroit getting set to take on their division rivals, Jared Goff and the Lions. I'm still new to playing teams twice in one season, but one thing I realized in the past that the second time you play a team is completely different than the first. It's a whole new team. Second down at five off the fake to Jamal Williams. Goff going deep, wide open, touchdown on his first. NFL reception, the rookie out of Alabama. Blown, busted coverage, Lions lead. Now Cousins on first down, pass caught. Oliudo in, extra beef. It's a flip left to Dalvin. He cuts to the right, into the end zone. Touchdown, Vikings! Hey, um, right here. Yeah. All right, here we go. First and goal from the three. Stutter step Bumble. by Cook. Lost the football. And the Lions have recovered. That is costly, man. I mean, that's an understatement to say costly. Detroit, you know, they had some uh, explosive plays across the board. Their offense was firing on all cylinders. They're running the ball pretty well as well. Or their defense is making some good plays and stuff. You could just tell throughout the season, their team has just improved so much throughout the year. And uh, it was like almost like week in, week out, they were just growing as a team. Two minutes remaining. Goff throws. Wow. Not the same Lions team that we saw week three. Nine seconds to go. Vikings trail by 11. Cousins on a deep drop. Three-man rush. It's caught by Jefferson, and he pitches it to Hawkinson at the 40. Uh, TJ loses it. The Lions fall on him, and the Detroit Lions have defeated the Minnesota Vikings 34-23. Knowing there's going to be ups and downs and just kind of stay focused, keep the main thing the main thing, always improving. Every week, you can always get better at something. And, you know, I think we're, we're humble enough to know that we can do those things. I actually know a bunch about the Colts. I think that was like the most preparation that I've done. You know, my, my note sheet was, was really full. I watched a whole bunch of film. Uh, so I was, I was super prepared uh, going to that game. How dialed in can we be? How locked in can we be? Whatever adjustments we may make, ultimately trusting in the fact you will win one-on-one -on -one matchups. You guys will win collectively. And before you know it, you guys will be flying around. 
U.S. Bank Stadium. Welcome to Saturday Football from U.S. Bank Stadium, where the Minnesota Vikings play the team with the horseshoes on the helmets. The Indianapolis Colts are in town. The Vikings have a chance to wrap up a division here today. Great to have you with us here in the Great White North. Second down, shotgun, throws to the left. It's bounding about incomplete. Oh, the punt's blocked. And it's picked up by a member of the Colts, and it's a touchdown for Indy. It's 9-0, Colts. Hand off, Dalvin Cook, jump cut to his right, and he lost the football. It's picked up by the Colts. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. What can go wrong is going wrong. I don't know what is going on mentally wow. with this team, but they better get it. They got to get it together right now. And you go up three scores. That is not easy to come back from if you're the Minnesota Vikings. I don't care how explosive your offense is. In the game, you know, we were down, you know, starting to, you know, get away from us. Um, you know, we're just on the sideline, just, just trying to get back together, you know, trying to find our rhythm, some type of rhythm, um, trying to find some type of spark. Bryant takes the snap, back to pass, has time, looking, throws right side, Pitt with the catch at the 40-yard line, but he is wrapped up right there, ball came out, picked up by Minnesota, Vikings down the far left sideline, Shandon Sullivan cuts back into the end zone. But they're saying Pittman was down. No, he wasn't. Shandon Sullivan may have just had a touchdown rob from him. Yeah, I think so. I mean, unless they blew the whistle because of their saying forward contact, it should be 23-7 right now. Under some pressure, throws, intercepted, picked off by the Colts, and it's going back for a touchdown. Unbelievable. I don't know what the percentage is when you give up a block punt touchdown and a pick six in terms of winning, but it has to be astronomical. In the locker room at halftime, uh, you know, although we were down by a bunch, uh, I didn't see a lot of doubt. And, you know, it's funny because people keep asking me, you know, did I really think we were going to come back? And it's funny because I tell them, like, like kind of, yeah. Like, you know, it wasn't really, like, a lot of doubt. One snap at a time. One snap at a time. We got to go back in, all right? Are we going to do the thing again? We're going to do it again. Forget the scoreboard. It's all about us. One snap at a time. Hey, hey I don't care what the score is. I love playing with y'all. Come on. I love you guys. Let's go. And I, I'm not a, a real big talker during halftime, um, you know, for the most part. If I feel like something needs to be said, you know, I'll speak, speak on that. Hey, you find a way to score five yeah, yeah. That's all. Just something came to me. It was like, you need to just tell the offense all they need is five touchdowns. And that's how it, you know, th th that was the first thought that came to my mind. All we need is five touchdowns, bro. That's it. You know, I know that may sound you know, like a very, very tall task, but, you know, I believe in you guys. I know if you guys can go out there and execute the game plan that KO built up throughout this whole week and execute it, I know we can achieve that goal. This is a stadium and a team in search of momentum. Second and 12 from the Vikings, 33. Empty backfield, Cousins out of the shotgun. Look at a man wide open, that's Osborne, 35 of the Colts. To the 40, 30, to the 20, dragging the Colts to the 10, yes! It'll be first and goal, a gain of 63. Finally some positivity, and I don't care what the score is. Two receivers stack right, two to the left. Cousins in the gun, third and goal for the two. Here's the snap, Cousins back, throws left side, got Osborne wide open, drags the toes, touchdown Minnesota. Finally, the Vikings on the board with 8.22 to go in the third quarter. It's now a 33-6 Indianapolis lead. He's still got a long, long way to go to right this ship, boy, I'll tell you that. Pass right side, caught by Pittman, upended immediately. And on fourth down, the field goal team is coming out. 52-yard drive, kick is good. Second down, 10, football to Colts, 26. Cousins in the gun, he'll flip it out to the right side. That's caught by Osborne. Osborne across the 20, spins out of a tackle, over the 15, and all the way down close to the 10. KJ came to play. Hey, you're right about that. K.J. Osborne is absolutely competing today. As I start to feel the crowd believing, that's what exactly what I was telling my guys on the sideline. Do you guys feel it? Do you guys feel that energy, that surge, that, that, that momentum switch? Do you guys feel it? Do you guys taste it? And the guys start to 
yeah, Peachy, I, I am starting to feel it. And that's when the tide started to turn and touchdown after touchdown started racking up on him. First and goal from the one, Cousins under center. Galvin floats out to the left, handoff. CJ grinds inside the one. CJ Ham. Close to the end zone. No signal. Touchdown. Yep. There's some energy in the building now, right? Some of the Vikings fans looking up and saying, okay, we're down 22. This is not impossible. Uh, three receivers right, two left. Cousins back to pass. Looks left, throws left, caught. Jefferson, five, walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Vikings! Oh, it's like and one mixtape. Oh, baby! My godson with the crossover. For JJ and yep. KJ, they're both competing out there, boy. I'll tell you that. Indianapolis 36, Minnesota 21. The Vikings not done quite yet. Decibel meter is rising here at U.S. Bank Stadium. Third and five from his own 33 yard line. Takes the snap, looks right, screen to Pittman. Kendrick stopped it at the 30 loss of three. They'll turn it back over to Minnesota. Cousins under center, Dalvin the tailback, third and goal from the one. Play action, Kirk throws to the end zone, caught, touchdown, Vikings! First and ten goals with their own 38, ball on the near side, right hash. Ryan will hand it off, Jackson covers up the football, drives straight ahead, gets out to the 40-yard line, the ball is out, picked up by Minnesota, are they letting this play go? This could be a touchdown for the Vikings by Tandon Sullivan. He said that he was down by contact. By, oh my heavens, the was ball's he? on the ground. It's yeah. not even close. Oh my goodness. That was Chandon Sullivan who already had a return called back. Remember on the forward progress stopped in the first half. Colts fourth and one. If you go for it here and get the first down, there's a high, high probability you win the game. Ryan takes the snap, drives straight ahead. This is going to be close. Ryan only needed about six inches, but I don't know if he got it. They're going to stretch this out, and he is short. 2.19 to go in the game, 36-28 Colts, and we got the ball back. Minnesota is going to have it. With 2.19 to go, Cousins takes the shotgun snap, back to pass, quick throw, left side, caught by Cook along the numbers, 40, 45, cuts right, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, Cook to the 20, cuts left, 15, down to the 10, inside the 5, diving to the end zone, touchdown Minnesota, touchdown Vikings, Dalvin Cook goes all the way, and this place has come unglued, Minnesota is within 2. Two-point try. Yep. Down by two. Here we go. Cousins push Jefferson in motion. Snap. Takes a handoff. Looks left. Looks center. Yes! It is TJ Hawkinson for the two! And we're tied at 36! The Minnesota Vikings down 33 have come all the way back on the Indianapolis Colts. And it's now 36-36. And we've got overtime in Minneapolis. The Minnesota Vikings, from a 33-point deficit, have come back to force overtime. We about to have to win the game. That's it. Everybody got to do your job. Be accountable to each other. We're going to get the chance to win. But we all got to be locked on. We all got to be locked on. Come on. 40 Cousins shotgun. Pass right, it's caught by Jefferson, turns it up 35-30, crawls to the 26. We have plenty of time to kill the clock. And Greg Joseph is coming out for a 40-yard field goal to win the game and cap off what would be the largest comeback in NFL history. Snap spot, Joseph, right-footed kick, it is!
Oh! Way to play, bro. Great job. Way to go, baby. We're not playing. We didn't know, man. We didn't yell. Yeah. Biggest comeback in NFL history. Hell yeah! yeah. yeah. Why not slide on three? One, two, three. Why, Why not slide? Just never a doubt, you know, that the guys in those locker rooms never going to stop fighting, no matter what the outcome was. Guys are just so committed to one another, and that's all you can ask for, you know, for guys to to not only love one another but to be co committed to one another. It just makes those W's that much more special. Lead us out of here. What I, what I say halftime? That's all we need, baby. That's all we need, baby. Thank you, 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 guys. Keep amazing. Let's go. If, if Buffalo could be top, you know I mean, to be NFC North champs at home and the biggest comeback in NFL history, hopefully we don't have to break that record again. Uh, but, you know, it felt real good. We set out a long time ago talking about doing one thing. And one thing first before we talked about anything else. Congratulations, NFC North champs right there. Yeah. When we came in this locker room at halftime, it couldn't get much worse. We couldn't have done more to allow that other team to win the football game. But I just felt it. I felt each and every one of you. I felt the captains with your C's on your chest understanding that we we're about to go break an all-time regular season or playoff record for comeback victory. To yeah! When I tell you guys, when I tell you guys I love you, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. And that will never change. I will ride with this group until they don't let us play anymore. So, read in tight, and then I want to hear you guys celebrate the 2022 NFC North Championship. Vikings on three, one, two, three, four. Vikings! Vikings! When I came in to the league in 2018, there was a bunch of veteran guys in the room and they had a tradition going with the O-line coach at the time, Tony Sperano, that the boys decorated the room for Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. You find out really early uh, what your roles as a rookie are going to be and that's pretty high up on the list. You think you have rookie duties now, we'll wait till you get to the holidays. It's something I look forward to seeing every year, beginning with October 1st and Halloween. The rookies came out really strong with Halloween. It was the best Halloween I, I, that any of us had seen. So we were ready to be blown away by their Christmas decorations. They bought a bunch of big things instead of filling all the walls. I kind of want to see wrapping paper across every square inch of the wall. I want things hanging from the ceiling. But the inflatables were nice, a couple trees. There's a train going around one of the trees. So they did a good job. Garrett did a really good job his rookie year doing a stocking for every single person. You get stockings for everyone and you write their numbers on them and I actually filled their stockings uh, on Christmas Day. When we do our online Christmas gift exchange they were all stuffed that morning with a bunch of gifts and it was pretty cool. Everyone has to go through it. The more fun that they have with it the more we enjoy it. It's a lot of work but um the season being a, such a grind, to have that change of pace where you can walk by the old line room and just kind of chuckle to yourself, whether it's October, November, or December. Yeah, it was Tony's favorite. Um, you know, unfortunately, he passed away right before the 2018 season started. And so, you know, that's kind of been why we've continued to do it. You know, I feel like some coaches might get annoyed with it or frustrated with all the lights and the candles and the Christmas trees, but I've now had three O-line coaches in the past four years, and all of them kind of understand that it's a tradition here, but it's also part of uh, Coach Sperano's legacy. There's an ode to Tony in, in all the decorations we do, and it's not about how much money you spend. It's not about how many blow-ups you have. It's the spirit of the holiday, and, and make it something that the guys can enjoy and be proud of. And everybody who's done it would say they were a part of something that everybody else had done in the past and that this is the most important thing going, being a part of the group and um, contributing to the group's success. And I guess going all out on the decorations is a way that they, you know, kind of show it. Prime time. 
center stage. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the all white uniform, you know, make us, make us look faster. It's something about that all white. I feel like a superhero. Make me that all white on. It's just something about it. Just a clean look, you know, it looks good. It's easy to have some swag with that. Vikings and the New York Giants from U.S. Bank Stadium. Christmas Eve football is next. Come on, baby, let's go. Hey, man, we talking about Christmas, man? What a better gift than this, man. For real. Vikings on three, one, two, three, five. They get it, baby. of the second most wins in one score games this year with eight while the minnesota vikings have won 10 this season to lead the nfl let's see if we got another tight one today i feel like going against your former team that you were on and stuff like that you always you always want to get that win and uh as always a little bit more uh personal i guess you would say first and 10 from the 12 of the giants were scoreless cousins under center play action back to pass to the end zone That was, that was a tough game just because, you know, it was a game of ebbs and flows. And Jackson Jones throwing again and throwing left, and it's caught by Bellinger. He dropped the ball, picked up by Asamoa, and the rookie has his first fumble recovery. He's going to whip one right, and Richie James is open at the 25. He'll whip one to the left, intercepted by the Minnesota Vikings, and it's picked off. They score, we score, they score, we score. Jones stepping up. Daniel Jones looking, throwing, end zone, touchdown, Isaiah Hodgins. Team Giants blitz, Cousins walks it to the end zone. DJ Hawkinson, yes! Touchdown, Vikings! Kirk throws a ball up to you, you just go get it. You know, it's just really the trust that he has in you uh, as a player. Giants rush four, Kirk protected sweetly, fires to JJ! Inside leverage, doubling you. That's unbelievable, brother. Hey, nobody like you. You deserve it, man. Come back to your next job. Great play. Hey, thanks for celebrating with me. And now Scottish Hammer guys into punt with 410 to go. Snap. Hey, well, it's crazy too. I, I was getting there. I'm like, I'm, I'm running into. I'm like, I gotta block it. This. I'm like, I gotta block it. Yeah, like I had old teammates on the team and everything. Uh, like Saquon, <laughs> he would make it. Like, I, I feel like he didn't want to run to me in, on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you still, you still <laughs> yeah. They're going to run Saquon up the middle for the first down. And he sprints to the 15-10-5. Touchdown, Saquon Barkley. And the Giants are a two-point conversion. Tie in this thing. It is caught! Bellinger, tie game! Out of the shotgun, here's the big blitz. Pass right to J.J., turns it up to the 45. Gets to the 50. Oh, first down to the 44-yard line. we got to hurry. We have no timeouts. 12, 11, 10, 9, 16-yard gain. Five, four, Cousins kills the clock. So we're looking at a 61-yard field goal try or thereabouts for Greg Joseph, whose career long is 56. I mean, I was probably the most confident with him. He's, uh, he's extremely clutch. Snap spot. Joseph with a big leg and Mary! 
It's Christmas! Minnesota Vikings fans! The Vikings have beaten the Giants 27-24. It's Joseph from 61! Wow! Greg showed up time and time again for us this year. Uh, Game-winning kicks, walking out there, trusting his process and knowing that uh, each and every guy on our team and our coaches, uh, we all had nothing but 100% confidence that Greg would go out there and get the job done, and that's exactly what he did. How far was it? Uh, no. Uh, no need to think about it. For the 125th time, the Minnesota Vikings and Green Bay Packers will meet. It is Lambeau Field on a sunny Sunday. Like, I try to drown my thoughts with, like, music. Like, if I'm not listening to music, you don't hear me listen to music, or I have headphones on. Yes, sir, Duke! Yes, sir! Duke Shelley with another piece of wonderful coverage on the rookie Christian Watson. Like, I want to be out there. I want to, I want to, like, show what I can do and all that stuff, but I can't. There's the pass down the middle, and it's broken up and intercepted! Off the deflection, it's picked off! Oh! To the left side, 50-40. Savage gets the sideline. Touchdown, Green Bay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Since injury, I kind of stayed away from watching too much, like, football, football. Like, oh, don't get me wrong. A lot of my teammates would give me hell for that, though. They're like, why aren't you watching? It's like, hey, you, you don't understand. It's like being on the sideline. There's like... It, it sucks. Cousins shotgun, three-man rush, and a blitz from the outside. Cousins looks left, sees nothing. Come on, Cousins. Come on, bro. Make some shake, bro. Now he floats back to the right. Now back to the left, and he runs 35-40. Kirk gets the 50. Kirk gets a first down to the Packers 41-yard line. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, everything going the Packers' way. Every bounce. At this stage of the game, you, you, you try to look at the things that have gone well, and yeah, it's been a struggle all night. Quarter battle 125 goes the way of the Green Bay Packers. The whole saying, it's hard to beat a team twice. Like, it's hard to beat a team twice. The final score, Green Bay 41 and Minnesota 17. That's kind of part of the game. It comes with, it comes with that. No, the expectations, part of the game. The naysayers, is part of the game. Van wagons, is part of the game. Sadly, injuries, is part of the game. So, you just gotta take it as it is. The injury was my welcome to the NFL moment. Like, I couldn't have it any other way. <laughs> oh my gosh. Everything flashed in front of my eyes, like damn, the season's done for me. Like, damn, I gotta get surgery. And it's like, yo, my leg looks like, I don't even know, it's twisted in some funny position. Like, I had to make peace with that very fast. But everything happens for a reason, though. Everything happens for a reason. I haven't had a chance to talk to you guys as a team since the locker room after the game the other day. We are moving forward, uh, but we also know you guys already started the process of accepting uh, what took place the other night, the other day, uh, up at Lambeau, and we're gonna learn from it, but as you guys have done every single time uh, we've had uh, one of our four losses this year, uh, we've responded with a victory, we've responded with one of our best performances. What an opportunity uh, to finish out this season in the division against a team we've beaten already. Week 18, 17th game. You gotta be masters of doing your job, digest the plan, and be ready to go execute. It's about us, all right? Nothing about the other day, all right, when that game got away from us was about the other team. We get an opportunity to a man to get that taste out of our mouth and set, us, set ourselves up. All right, one week from Sunday, hosting a playoff game at U.S. Bank Stadium with everything we talked about out in front of us. The NFC North champions, the Minnesota Vikings, are in Chicago at Soldier Field to take on the Bears. Yeah. I already know what you want. Hey, hey. I already know. It's different right now. I already know. It's different right now. Come on. It's different right now. Come they, on. Oh, they got to play that. I have thought about going against Chicago since the day I got here. It was just a blessing to be able to go somewhere that's in the same division as, as your old team and being able to play them twice a year. So once I got to Minnesota, I, I kind of circled in the Chicago game on, on my calendar. Oh, 
They owe. They gotta pay what they owe today. They gotta pay what they owe today. Let's go. Let's, let's do go. it. Let's, let's go. go. Let's do it. Come on. Every play. Let's do it. Let's do it. It definitely sticks with you. It's in the back of your head. Play with a little bit more emotion. Everything kind of means a little bit more. Try to stay level-headed as much as you can and uh, try to try to treat it as just a regular game, but it's always a little bit more off to it. The 12 and four Minnesota Vikings. Let's get a game for Let out onto the field by Kirk Cousins as we take our first look at the Vikings offense. And KJ Osborne's wide open at the 35 to the 30 of the Bears to the 30 KJ inside the 10 KJ. First and goal, four yard line, fake to Cook. Cousins, end zone, touchdown, Adam Thielen. I gotta play the whole game, huh? huh? I gotta play the whole game, huh? <laughs> you know they got beat up in the media, beat down over in Green Bay. They come back and they're all ready to go. Second and goal, Madison. He's in for a Vikings touchdown. He's going to hand it to Madison, left side. Alex leaves his feet into the end zone. Touchdown. His second touchdown today. Great job. Where are you getting it? Good job, man. I'm about to get a pick. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. Fourth and 10 from the Bears 24. They're going for it. Boyle, Claypool, intercepted by Duke Shelley, the former Bear. It, it felt great, man. It was just overwhelming for me. Yeah, Duke! <laughs> All the guys had happy for me. Uh, I remember specifically Pat P just running out on the field without his helmet on. Just probably the most excited guy for me because he's been telling me for the last couple of weeks that I was going to get one. So uh, when it all came full circle for me being in Chicago, he, he was just lit for me. I, I appreciate him for sure. Shelly! That boy caught him one. It's just a brotherhood here. And I'm just thankful to be a part of it, man, because I could have been anywhere, could be at home. So. I just appreciate how everybody welcomed me in and how the fans welcomed me in. And it's just all a blessing for me. You earned it. Come on. Did it the old fashioned hey, way. You earned it, man. Yeah, man. Hey, I'm so proud of you, boy. Appreciate you, brother. We got you. <laughs> on to the playoffs, baby. You feel me? That real season starting now, baby. 13, man. Let's go. 13. Yeah. Way to go, baby. Yeah. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Yeah. We were the only thing that stopped ourselves today. We could have rolled all day long. I can't tell you how proud I am of your preparation and taking it to the game and just consistently playing good ball. That was the hope for today. But here's what I want. I want everything we got, whether you play today or not, everything you got is getting poured into this week. You're going to get the same out of us as a staff, and we're going to show up with our best collective effort as the Minnesota Vikings this next weekend when it matters the most. We are primed and ready. Accomplishing all we did this year, 13 wins in this league is not easy to do. Give it up for yourselves one more time. Let's get a break on me. Got a great opportunity with this uh, 2022 Minnesota Vikings team. Um, got a new regime. I really, truly believe, you know, the sky's the limit for us. I, I had high hopes because I saw the focus that guys had coming back. So am I surprised that we're here? No. This is why I came back. This is why I wanted to be back in Minnesota because I saw the potential. I know the guys that we have in this locker room. I know how much it means to them. Why wouldn't you want to be around the guys, guys that have that same mindset and that same mentality that you do? I was talking about this team being in our way of breaking up what we have, you know, so special. I tell guys all the time, man, you don't get opportunities like this very often. It's got to relish this moment, man. You can't live with no regrets. From the one for the Minnesota Vikings in the game is scoreless. Cousins sneaks. Cousins dives. Cousins plunges. That's about as big a statement as you can make. I got the feel just like that. What a run. Rocketing down the sideline. And a Answer by the Giants. The Giants have had it twice in two scores. This Minnesota defense doesn't have a lot of answers right now. Deep drop. Passes over the middle. Caught. KJ. Touchdown. 
And the Vikings have cut it down just before halftime. Huge, huge play. Throws wide open the tight end. Touchdown. The Giants have scored again. Way too easy right no. now. Everything we work for. You look at the scoreboard. We just need some kind of momentum. Pressure comes. Fires caught by Hawkinson. A big hit, but he holds on anyway. Bain right man open. Caught the so This offense is rolling now. Touchdown. This has been a humdinger. It is up, and we are tied. Barkley, what an effort, and he is in. Touchdown, New York. And New York is taking a lead. It's nervous time at U.S. Bank Stadium. 11 and 0 in one score game. Time is of the essence here. You need to go down and get seven. Here it is. Biggest play in the season right here, right, Paul? It's the entire season. Cousins, Hawkinson, he is not going to get there, and the Giants will take over. 31 to 24, zeros on the clock, it's over. The Giants have upset Minnesota. Something we preach a lot about is being at your best when your best is required. And we just weren't at our best in that moment. So many times when we were at our best at the end of games, we did make the plays required. You know, I think the challenge with pro football is that it Unless you win the Lombardi, it, it doesn't feel right at the end. And I think our fans will remember that part of this year, but I also think that they'll remember the 13 wins. Jefferson again! Touchdown! You're so cold-blooded! You like it! The double doink in London. The comeback against the Colts. The we kept it interesting. You can't take back that moment you felt in Buffalo when Pat P closed out the game. That moment happened, that joy that you experienced happened. I want us all to appreciate those things, knowing we want that last moment of joy to happen in February. When a lot of the rest of the league is at home watching, we want to be with the, the teams playing, and we want to play further and further and further into the season until we can go chasing uh, that four-quarter opportunity to win a Lombardi trophy. There will be many big decisions that are made this offseason. And those decisions will, will impact our, our team, our organization immediately, and also in the long term. As I look around our building and I look at our locker room, I look at our coaching staff, I see a lot of great people. And that gives me hope and encouragement for where we're headed. So many things in life don't live up to the hype, like big time prize fights or big time sporting events. Well, there were a lot of things said up to this season. We're gonna be able to build a culture here uh, that the players will feel as connected as they've ever been to a coaching staff before. It's, it's one of my main goals and I cannot wait to get going with our football team. And there were some palpable things that were said and they were very telling. And they're coming to fruition right before our very eyes. I love the environment that Kevin's created and it really is just a reflection of the culture he's built celebrate each other, enjoy being around each other, let people be themselves. This team has high expectations for themselves. They expect to win, uh, but it's also about joy and, and, and sharing those moments with your brothers and, and really the, these connections, these bonds are, are, are what's gonna laugh to lifetime. And I'm so, it's so cool to see those up close. This team is always going to hold a, a special place in my heart. I'll remember every player, I'll remember every game. I'll remember the moments, both the highs and lows, uh, that ultimately hopefully set the foundation moving forward here for a lot of success for, for years to come, but this team will always be uh, very special to me.